All right, hi, I'm Captain Jim Hanley. We're leaving the Small Boat Harbor or Buffalo Harbor State Park if you're not from the area. And I'm out with my buddy, Captain Tom Cesaric. And we're going musky fishing today. I haven't been musky fishing in like two years, but I figured I'd show you the techniques we use here in the Buffalo Harbor. And, uh, you know, we're gonna go trolling, so we're gonna be pulling some really big plugs and hopefully you'll learn something. Hey, do me a favor. If you like the content on this channel, hit that subscribe button and like it too. I'd appreciate it. Comments are great, I love it. Uh, what flavor? Let's try uh, these two. All right, so now we're gonna put a couple of my favorites on. That's an old uh, version of a, the perch bait, one of the originals with a giant lip on it. And we're gonna run that one deep. I run fluorocarbon leaders. I know, I know, I get harassed for it by some purist musky guys. But it give, definitely gives bait a bigger wiggle and I've got a 56 inch on it, so it definitely works. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our baits are running right. They pull a little bit, don't they, a little bit. This is Tom's first musky yeah, trip. So we're just gonna make sure it's looking good, it's running straight. If they're running crooked, got to fix them because if you don't, you're going to have a nightmare. So we're going to let that one out. We're going to let it out like four or five colors. We're using lead core line. No counters on these reels because we really don't need it because lead core gives us what we want. All right. and number three. One thing's important, folks. A lot of people around the western New York area fish with their rod tips in the water. I have these new Real easy rod holders. We're gonna experiment with them today to see how they work for our musky fishing. And uh, the reason why they put their rod tips in the water is to keep weeds off of them. But since my boat is a multi-purpose boat, I have rod holders that I do not think I can get low enough to get in the water. So we're gonna make, make the best of it. So we're gonna always pay attention to what that rod tip is doing. So here's something invaluable that you just cannot be without if you're musky fishing on the Upper Niagara River, Lake Erie area. These are called Nipex. Nipex are cutters from Germany. Mine have been in the boat for a while, I guess they're pretty rusty, but they will cut anything. So if you get a, a hook in a fish, you can't release it, just cut it. You're better off just cutting the hook and uh, leaving whatever you have to in there. Plus. It worked for me one time. I stuck a musky hook through my hand and cut the barb off and pulled it back through. So make sure you have nip extra. This perch bait right here caught the biggest musky I've ever had in my boat was 56 inches, 50 pounds. Here's a picture of Stan holding it. And Stan is bigger than Josh Allen, so the fish doesn't look as big, but you can see the teeth marks in there. And it made a mess. My daughter wanted it in an auction musky auction and she had it on her bedroom wall for years and I finally said to her hey Holly can I use that for fishing she said yep the next day it caught that giant fish so you never know as you're letting them out let them out slow and easy so you feel that bait wiggling the whole way out we'll experiment with our speed let the fish tell you what they want but right now water temperature is 54 degrees it's getting about prime right here in the uh, Lake Erie, Upper Niagara. Something interesting about the area right here is that in the Buffalo Harbor, which we are in right now, in New York State, the musky size limit is 54 inches. So if it's under 54, you can't harvest it, you can't keep it for a trophy or whatever. Most people don't. We let our 56 go too. The amazing part of what makes us such a great fishery is the confluence of right back here the Buffalo River is uh, spilling water into this harbor. Right up ahead here, you can see the Peace Bridge is where the Niagara River comes in. Everything is going down the Niagara River to Niagara Falls into Lake Ontario, creating the current that brings in the bait fish from here. There's Canada right there, and Lake Erie all the way around here, 210 miles to Detroit, Michigan. So speed is 2.9, once again, 54, 55 degrees, the water temperature's dropping. It's amazing, musky. The colder and crappier it gets out here, the better we, uh, better we catch them. All right, so the way we're using our propulsion too is I have my motor guide motor out there on autopilot. That's steering the boat. 
and we've got our little 99 Merc next to the 300 there kicking us along and so I'm not a pure troller I take mine on and off as needed so and there Tom just put the little safety rope on there so here's a little blast in the past this is an old pikey minnow pikey minnows were real popular when I first started doing musky fishing back in the late 70s we would take our pliers and we would bend the lip on a pikey minnow. You can still do it, it'll still work. See a little bend right there? And that would cause the pikey to really act erratic. It would shift from one side to the other, back and forth. And that was a trick that uh, the old trollers in the Niagara River did and I kind of followed suit. And I got a whole bunch of old pikeys with bent lips on them. But now that uh, we've discovered that muskies are in the lake and they're the real big ones, we're kind of running much bigger baits, fishing a lot deeper instead of like, you know, 10 to 15 feet where we'd catch them in the river over the weed bed. Because we're using lead core, we don't need a line counter for what we're doing. Lead is measured out in 10 yards per color. So when you let your line out and we want to make sure we're on the bottom, we want to make sure we're down about 25 feet because it averages about 25 feet throughout the harbor here. All right, here's an important note. When you're pulling these big deep diving baits, always make sure you're on a straight run before you let them out because if you're on a turn at all, you're gonna have a nightmare. You're gonna have these deep divers just meet up underwater and uh, that's not fun, especially after a lead cord. Tom likes untangle eight, a lead cord, eight, don't you? Eight colors, wonderful. Eight colors is wonderful. <laughs> all right, so for me, Musky fishing is all about experimenting. We're using a bait. I don't even know what the name of this bait is, but it's a shallow runner. And I have some magnum boards from Offshore Tackle. And there's an area that I want to try. We're going to try putting this up close to shore where the fish might be cruising along. So we're going to let this guy out. And we're going to hook up a board to it and see what happens. Let's check the yeah. movement on that baby. That's nice. Got a wiggle. All right, so we're going to let this out. One color, which would be 30 feet, 10 yards, and then we're going to hook the board up to it and see what happens. All right, so now we're going to hook our magnum board up. And magnum board with, uh, we're going to hook her down there with the OR-16 in the back. Always remember, folks, OR-16 has a pin in there. You want to always make sure you get it behind the pin. Or it's gonna come Let's loose, you're gonna lose it. Yep, there it is, beautiful. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see how it re responds. All right, musky fishing with a planer board. Hey, Bruce. Bruce DeShado, how do you like this, baby? If this works, we're gonna send it to you. Watching my dump finder. You know, the history in the Buffalo Harbor here is pretty amazing. Buffalo at one time was the third wealthiest city in the country. When all the shipping came through Buffalo and went on to the East Coast through the Erie Canal. Matter of fact, that lighthouse right there I believe is from 1813 or is it 1812 whatever it is it's an oldie so I mentioned before about the confluence of Lake Erie Niagara River Buffalo River coming together you can see the the current break right here we're coming around this the end of this uh, break right here and you can see the current break so it's almost like reading a trout stream but we're musky fishing so we're gonna use that current break we're going to take our baits real close to the end of the wall here. We've got our planer board out here with a, uh, a shallow runner on. We're going to see what happens. And that's what you do is just experiment. Musky fishing is about experimenting or casting. And let me just show you some of the other lures that are available and different ways to, to uh, catch musky in. So here's some great baits for you casters from Red October. Incredible. Giant tubes, all shapes and sizes, colors, different configurations. These things catch a lot of big fish. 
All right, so uh, some of the other options in fishing the harbor area, if you're a caster or you want to fish the Niagara River, are baits like, like this old, I think it's called a bobby bait. One of my customers caught a 48 inch tiger muskie, which is a hybrid cross between a muskie and a nor northern pike. Um, a tremendous fish, and we saw it come up and eat it. This is a, a swick. This is a bait that you, uh, they call them jerk baits, and I'm not really sure if it's because you jerk it or you got to be a jerk to throw them because they will wear you out, jerk baits. Um, there's another version of a, a great looking bait, a Leo. That's a Leo. There is the name on it. And I better steer here so I don't almost kill, wipe out on the buoy again. But uh, and here's another bobby bait or whatever it is with the uh, with the with the uh, wire on the front. What you do is jerk these, and these things would almost like walk the dog underwater. So those are options that um, other than you know trolling or throwing the um, red October baits, great way. And let me just show you uh, a live bait version as well. All right, so I have boxes and boxes of tackle like every good fisherman has because you know whoever dies with the most tackle wins. So it's like any toy. So I have a lot of other stuff. Here's bucktails for throwing in, in uh, shallower waters, uh, all kinds of bucktails and giant spinner baits and all kinds of, uh, all kinds of extra baits. And let me flip this one over. And on the other side, one thing you wanna always carry with you when you're musky fishing, and I mentioned before about having the Nipex in case you uh, put it through you and you have to cut it off or through a fish, always carry extra hooks because extra hooks are cheap. You cut them and you're in great shape. But here's one of our live bait rigs that we fish in the Niagara River. It's just simply a swivel with a hook and a little blade, and we put a, a sucker on here or some type of big bait fish and just drag it along and that catches a lot of a uh, lot of uh, musky in the river on live bait that's a great way but all right so here's a blast from the past from the late 70s when i was heavily involved in muskies inc we had tags we would have this uh, applicator which we would put this tag inside of it won't go inside there's some cork in here but we would take this and stick it just below the dorsal fin would pop out the little the little catch would stay inside the musky and here's the info on here right to muskies inc uh st paul minnesota 55165 with a number on here so when we caught this fish say we caught it in the upper niagara river and um you know we caught it in september or whatever and then the following year or two years later somebody caught it and they would say oh we caught it we caught it out in the middle of lake erie then we know that that made a migration or that fish really traveled a long way. It was great. So then the follow-up, we finally got New York State involved and New York State said, well, listen, we don't like those, those uh, little spaghetti tags. We're going to give you these clip-on tags. We would actually put these on. They were made for water, for fowl, for chickens and whatnot. And we would take this tag and it had like a pair of pliers. We'd clip this on the dorsal fin and this also had the information on it. So this one actually says DEC New York State. So Yeah, don't forget to check out that video on how I do this without tying a knot on your lead core. It's uh, pretty slick. You can't do it with the fluorocarbon. You actually have to tie a knot. But this is a great knot uh, for not having anything on there. It just, the, the, uh, it's kind of like the Chinese handcuffs you used to have as a kid. It, locks itself in place. So Tom, what'd you think about your first time musky fishing? Wonderful adventure. I said plenty of changing baits, working hard to get them, and I said the fish of 10,000 casts. All right, well, we got zero today in our musky trip in the Buffalo Harbor, but Captain Tom and I had a good time. He's never gone musky fishing before, and I uh, hope you learned something. It's all about the confluence of the, the two rivers and Lake Erie coming together, the current, the bait, getting these baits running right. You saw how we put them out. You saw the equipment we use, the various ways you can catch muskie in this area. It's really an incredible fishery, not only, you know, along with walleye and bass, which are bar none anyway. Folks, 
I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you watching this video. Get out and enjoy all this beautiful creation because it was made just for you. See you next time.